So uh, I, I, I thought I'd put some things together comparing uh, just, just some thoughts and, and, and open this up. Uh, the majority of my experience with SharePoint has been uh, SharePoint Workspace. Uh, uh, anybody know a SharePoint Workspace? It used to be Groove. It used to be Groove. Um, it was a, actually a very cool product. It was peer-to-peer, peer-to-peer, uh, peer uh, you could have it on your laptop, uh, and it would synchronize with all the other people in the background, and, and, and you had a filing system right there on your laptop, which you could then disconnect and you have access to it. Uh, I, I've worked somewhat with the regular SharePoint, um, and I put just some notes here to sort of compare the, to compare the two. Ah, we got, something is happening. Anyway, I'm trying. Um, we've got two ways of thinking about MediaWiki. Ooh. Oh. How long is this saying? Don't jinx it. Okay. Two, uh, uh, two, two ways of thinking about MediaWiki. Uh, one is that we're going to use pages, and the other one is we're going to use uploads. And uh, and it's gone. So it's, it's obviously whatever. So that one looks like it's more reliable. Um, if, you, if you look at the, the page mechanism, uh, you're able to edit online. It's immediately available. The changes are immediately available. Uh, so there are, there are some advantages in, in currency. Um, if, you, if you look at SharePoint, it's basically bringing up uh, documents in there. So it's, it's any duplication that's happened between documents is kind of out, out of sync. It's data at rest, pretty much. Now, that would be the same if you used the uploads. So if you used an upload, uh, here is the major difference, and it's a negative for MediaWiki, I think, unless I'm missing something. The um, SharePoint comes already with the tools to be able to organize by folder and organized by an office administrator. That's it. And so you can set all the folder structures up the way you want it, and that's immediately available for them to do the organization. But MediaWiki right out of the box really has no, no organization mechanism for the indexes to the documents, whether it's a, 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 a direct pointer or you want to put them into, into um, a folder or an organization structure. Now, I believe it could be built. Uh, I was starting to play around with this the other day. I said, could, could I actually build a killer filing system uh, uh, on top of this, uh, use all the extensions that I wanted to, etc.? And I actually started to have some problems uh, that I couldn't get through the file, the file page to find the property which would link me to the media itself. And since that property seems to be missing, uh, from the file page, I couldn't actually construct the index, which would take me directly to the media, to, to the media uh, document. Uh, so I, I, I didn't really pursue this, but I think it could be a, a, a project that, that could be embarked on to say, give an out-of-the-box tool, and, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, not a platform, but a tool with, with, with page form support for an administrator to be able to set up folder structures and the index is needed to, to do the same same function. Yes? It could go in both. It's just an index. It's just an index. When you actually look at the way that it I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear. Why can't you use categories instead of both? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's whatever collection you want, but you've got to, you've got to set it up and then show it to the user in, in terms of, so they know how to navigate to the right. Whether, it's a, whether you talk about a folder or, a, or an index, it doesn't matter, yeah. So, but I think, I think something could be built that would then show 
the, the capability of doing this in the same way that the administrator can set it up with the structures that, that they want the office administrator. Uh, in MediaWiki, we've got finer granularity depending on what extensions you, you're going to use. We've got fields, obviously. We've got sub-objects, um, and, and we've got reporting structures which are much, much more powerful. Um, and then we come back to the security question. And the uh, SharePoint's basically got security by workspace. So you can actually divvy it up into different workspaces and give people permissions to get access into those workspaces within the SharePoint site. So it, it does have some level of granularity. It's not much, much more than that. Uh, but, and we're still at the security question uh, of how do you give access to portions of the wiki to, to, to named people. And that was kind of my summary of where I, I saw the, the differences between the two. I think the potential is, in, is great, and I think that, that MediaWiki could be shown to do this function um, and, and give an administrator the, the ability to be able to set it up. Uh, I don't think I have it up here. I don't know whether. Um, so, I, I think this this is a topic that comes up at work all the time. So yeah. it's a great topic. Um, as far as organization by folders, so you were talking about. Well, you you might be talking about also using categories, but is what you're talking about as far as getting a structure different than like what drill down currently exists? Is? So that's kind of how I understood of what you're talking about, is just visualizing the way you're categorizing your media wiki data. Well, I, I think it's more, a, it's more a, a, a manual positioning. Th these are all the things associated with this aspect of this project. Okay. And it's a, it's a manual placing one done by the administrator more than anything. Yeah, because we, I mean, so our issue that we run into with, and why I, I don't think the SharePoint organization by folder is an advantage of it, but more of a disadvantage of it, is uh, a lot that we've been struggling with um, and why we moved more and more of our data to is that people's understanding of how data is related to something changes over time, right, depending on what you're using on it. I think Lex gave like a really good talk on this a couple of years ago about viewing the Eiffel Tower from different directions and stuff. But um, <clears throat> for in our instance, we had for years, uh, space shuttle flights that went up and they assembled the space station. So people thought of our data by space shuttle flight. All right. Now, since then, we've stopped with assembly and we've been real-time ops. And people who've worked there for almost a decade now never were involved in those space shuttle flights for newer people who arrived. So they don't relate that data to flights now. They relate it to hardware and to different dates that things happened. And so when you have, and we, so we had all this data was, in different folders by flights, but people don't instinctively think to go and search in that way. So they're missing some of the data that's there. And because of that, they're also, when they find that data, they're duplicating in a different place because they don't know it already exists in one. Um, yeah, so that's I, I, a huge thing that we've seen as an advantage of MediaWiki is be able to link things from different directions, basically. You can get to the same piece of data from a lot of different locations. Yeah, I, I think there's an advantage, I, I, I think it's, it's in the perspective of the users, though, and what they're used to doing, and they're still they're still back in the in the physical filing system mentality, and they're looking for that they're looking for that folder structure the same way as it's in Windows and the same way it's in Unix and you know it's a it's a hierarchical structure that's the way they they understand it but but I mean I totally agree that, that there's better ways of doing it. Um, I think this is actually really interesting in a way in that with the folder structure. This is the most similar of the enterprise use cases I've heard here to something that a Wikimedia project actually does in the form of commons, where, which is where Wikipedia puts its images, basically. And they're mostly arranged in a somewhat dysfunctional uh, category tree, which is in essence is basically a folder hierarchy, uh, like, you have a category named dogs, and then there's a subcategory of dogs in parks. I don't know. Um, 
there's a lot. Uh, there's a bunch of things. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, there's right. like every way you can imagine. So it's all organized into a folder. Um, so this kind of approach to folder does exist inside MediaWiki, even without any fancy extensions. Um, I'm not sure how well it works, but I think we do have that implemented, more or less. Then, then probably what we, what, what, what maybe what we're su I'm suggesting is we need some demonstrations of how to do that. Maybe rather than build something uh, t tomorrow. I, 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 File namespace is flat, but the it's category flat. namespace is very hierarchical. So, and the what the second? The, the category namespace is very. Oh hierarchical. yeah, the category. So you could put uh, yeah. So you could assign the categories and make a make the filing. I, I think I think it just has to be demonstrated. Um, I mean, I think it can be built. It's the the capabilities are there in the platform. It's just. I, I show you what. <laughs> but, but we use uh, we use the category tree and we use the subcategories to kind of fake that folder structure for our people who want to use folder to do it. It still allows that flat structure. Okay. So I can show you the information. Yeah, I'd like to see that, yeah. So I, I I haven't seen that, but yeah, you can use the category structure. I, I think it's 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 part of and and, and it, it can be set up by an administrator. It, it's done by everybody. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is part of that empowered user thing. Yeah, no, no. Right. But but when you're setting up category structures, yeah. you say, yeah. You can do that. Yeah. yeah. So for every file that you have, you can assign categories more than one. Yeah, you yeah. Can Now, here's the question, though. I, 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 you, you can do lots of things. Can an office administrator do that? Yeah. And, and, and you're okay with that? Yeah. Right, right, right. So, so, that's, so there's a file naming. There's a. There's a file naming constraint, and, and that's, that's that's fine. Everything has a name. That name is for that thing. Right. Exactly. Two hundred fifty-five bytes ought to be enough for anyone. Exactly. So so yeah. So you. So, so I, I'd like to see that tomorrow. I think it's the ease of use from from an office administrator that I'd like uh, I'd like to see that. Anyway, that was, uh, I guess that's one's gone. Oh, one, one comment I was just going to make, and that Darren likes to talk about this a lot as well, is one of the things that SharePoint is supposed to be optimized to do is to version and edit Microsoft Excel, Word, PowerPoint products and track changes. Yet how many people, at least definitely happens in our office, and probably in your works too, they're just emailing out copies or they're saying, please email me your edits to the Word document and I'll put them in myself. And they just completely ignore the baked in versioning capability of SharePoint. And I think that, from my perspective, is one of the things that SharePoint's not even doing what its core capability is supposed to be well. It's not intuitive to the users. Uh, the other thing is that so many, as, and I realize I'm speaking to the choir, but how many items are only put into Excel documents, Word documents, and PowerPoints because that's what people are familiar with. And even though it's only ever going to be viewed in electronic only format, they're just sticking to those products because the company has a SharePoint and it's in a Microsoft ecosystem. Uh, and then the third part of SharePoint versus Wiki is when people will say, well, let's just do a SharePoint Wiki. And uh, so I, I don't think you, you touched on that in your, your comparison. Well, but, I was trying not to do that. Yeah. <laughs> do you, if you emulate. The, with an uploads, that's what we're basically saying. That I, I, I think that you're going to get 
uh, and you're going to have something that looks the same and has all the same disadvantages. Yeah, I yeah, I was just going to go to say that almost the fundamental test there is if a basic user goes to any any wiki page that whole every page is page one, they should be able to edit and make a change instantly. Whereas if a page isn't properly configured, or even a SharePoint right. wiki page if it's not properly configured, they're still not going to be able to to edit it right. intuitively right, right away. So right. that's the other the third fundamental difference I see. Right. Um, the other reason that we have uh, with people who want to stick to uh, SharePoint uh, for certain reasons is for dual editing, right? So SharePoint's main thing is li you can live dual edit Microsoft Word documents between each other and see what each other are doing, add comments, go through. And there are definitely cases in, in our work, and I'm imagining other, other enterprise instances where you want to be able to have that live back and forth that you can visually see. I know you can think you can edit a page at the same time and if there's conflicts it will try to work them out. But that's not the same as literally being able to right. uh, actively see what's going on. So what Etherpad is for? all down with real-time collaborative editing. We don't really have an answer to that. There, there is a halfway answer of a JavaScript library that Mozilla has. Yeah, we have a lot of crappy halfway answers. <laughs> <laughs> halfway yeah. yeah. I, I hate editing complex. Yeah. I, I think e even those could be made a lot better than what we do currently. Like, my, when you have an edit conflict in Git, it's not anywhere near as miserable as on Wiki. But real-time collaborative editing would be a whole other cool thing. How, how do you handle it on the Is there something more between some of our edits that are second? Yeah, I imagine the edit conflicts a lot more on real Wikipedia than on the enterprise instances of use. Um, well, I don't actually edit Wikipedia, so I don't know. Um, I, I think they do get edit conflicts and they just deal with it. Generally, you only get an edit conflict if you're editing the same paragraph because uh, we run it through GNU diff 3, which is a tool for merging source code, so they assume new lines is like the break of a sentence, so instead that turns kind of into paragraphs when you're editing wiki text. Um, but yeah, mostly they just deal with it. I think Wikimedia Deutschland had a thing to make it slightly better. And I know, I think Visual Editor has some like very long-term plans of looking into it someday. How about now? There was a demo given at the Vienna Hackathon. Oh. There's actually, there's actually, there's actually a demo well, given at the uh, Vienna Hackathon or something like that. I think there might be something in MediaWiki.org, some real-time collaborative editing. So that's all. And, and someone at one at one point, someone had a Etherpad text area for. Those marks, I think. What's that? The, the, other the, the smart mark? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my doppelganger mark. Uh, yeah. Oh, not all of us have M A H as our initials, and we're pretty special, although there are two of us. Um, Anyway, does anybody else have a comment? If not, we can go 